Today we're going to look at a really nice cubic diophantine equation which I found on the Math Stack Exchange. And in fact, I adapted one of the solutions that was in this post. So our goal is to find all integers x and y satisfying x cubed minus y cubed equals x times y plus 61. So let's start by noticing that this x cubed minus y cubed has a standard factorization. It's a difference of cubes factorization. So in fact, it factors as x minus y times x squared plus xy plus y squared. So we can write the left hand side of our given equation in this form and we have that's equal to x times y plus 61. But now looking at this, that motivates a change of variables. Perhaps we could write a as x plus y, and we could write b as x minus y. So check it out, we've got the b right there. But what does that mean x and y are in terms of a and b? Well, adding these two equations, we'll see that 2x is equal to a plus b, and then 2y is equal to a minus b. So that's our translation back to x's and y's. Okay, well now let's notice that this term right here is a b, and then everything else is quadratic in x and y. So here we've got an x squared, an x times y, a y squared, so on and so forth. Well, in order to stay inside of the integers, I'd like to multiply this by 4 so I can write everything in terms of 2x and 2y. So let's do that. So multiplying everything by 4, we'll get b times 4x squared plus 4xy plus 4y squared equals 4xy plus 4 times 61, which is 244. Okay, nice. And now we'll start doing some simplification. So let's first note that 4x squared is equal to 2x quantity squared, so that's a plus b squared. But that simplifies down to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Maybe simplifies down should be replaced with expands to. Okay, so that's what we get for this 4x squared term. And then what do we get the, for this 4xy term? Well, that's 2x times 2y, but that's our difference of squares formula, a squared minus b squared, after multiplying that out. Oh, but that's what we have over here as well, a squared minus b squared. And all that remains here is this term right here, this 4y squared term, which is, in just, which is indeed just 2y quantity squared, or a minus b squared, which expands to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Okay, so that means we can replace our 4y squared with that. So let's see how this simplifies. So we have a b, and then notice we have a squared plus a squared plus a squared, so that gives us 3a squared. And then, when we and then we have 2ab minus 2ab, so that cancels. And then b squared plus b squared minus b squared, that gives us plus b squared. So that's what happens to this left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, we have a squared minus b squared plus 244. Four. Okay, now we can move some things around a little bit, maybe distribute this b through and then move the a squared and the minus b squared over, and that'll leave us with 3a squared b, and then plus b cubed minus a squared plus b squared equals 244. Four. Well, from here, maybe we'll take an a squared out of these two terms, That'll leave us with a squared times, well, let's just be very clear, we're taking an a squared out of these two underlined terms, leaving us with 3b minus one. And then left over, we have b cubed plus b squared equals 244. Okay. And that actually sets us up to think about dividing by b, 3b minus one. But in order to do that nicely, we probably want some coefficient in front of b cubed. 
And motivated by the fact that we have a three here, perhaps we want three cubed in front of b cubed. So that means we should perhaps multiply this whole thing by 27. So let's do that. We'll multiply this by 27, this by 27, and then this also by 27. That means we have to multiply the other side of the equation as well by 27. Okay. Now let's maybe divide everything by 3b minus one. That leaves us with 27a squared plus 27b cubed plus 27b squared over 3b minus one equals, well, 244 times 27 is in fact 6,588. We have that's over 3b minus one. Now this seems a bit like a problem because notice we've got a cubic polynomial divided by a linear polynomial, but that will gain us a quadratic polynomial along with a remainder. And the remainder is always one degree less than the thing that we're dividing by, or at least one degree less. So we're dividing by something of degree one, so that means our remainder will be of degree zero. And in fact, you can work out all the details if you're psyched, and perhaps we'll do the first couple of steps over here. If we do the long division of 3b minus 1 into this 27b cubed plus 27b squared, you'll see that we start with 9b squared to give us a 27b cubed here. That makes us subtract 9b squared, but then when we group and subtract, that builds this up to 36b squared. And then you can continue down all the way. So I won't do all of the polynomial long division. I'll let you check that out if you want to. But what we end up with is 12b and then plus 4, and you'll see that we get a remainder of 4. But having a remainder of four means that we can write this object, this rational function, as the quotient, which is this 9b squared plus 12b plus four, which in fact has a nice factorization of 3b plus two squared. So let's just highlight that that's the same thing as this, and then plus the remainder over the divisor, so plus, 4 over 3b minus 1. Okay, but now we can take this 3b minus 1 term and move it over to the other side of the equation and we have something nice to work with. So moving that over, we'll have 6,584 over 3b minus 1 equals 27a squared plus 3b plus 2 squared. But let's notice that here, this is most definitely a positive integer, just given its structure of having these perfect squares and having this 3b plus 2 here. It can't even be zero. So that means that this is a natural number. That means this 3b minus 1 must divide evenly into 6,584. So in other words, it is a factor of 6,584. Okay, so let's keep that in mind as we finish this problem off. So let's recall that we just determined that 3b minus 1 was a factor of this number 6,584. And in fact, you can factor this as 2 cubed times 823. 823 is in fact prime. So that gives us a strategy for writing down all of the factors. Furthermore, we had this other equation which related a and b, which will be useful kind of in the last couple of steps of this problem. Okay, so the, factor that, the fact that 3b minus 1 is a factor of this means that 3b minus 1 must come from the following set. So 1, 2, 4, 8. So those are all of the powers of 2 that divide into 6,584. We can also have 823. 2 times 823, which is 1646. 4 times 823, which is 3292, and then the whole thing 6584. So those are our possibilities. But now we can eliminate some of those fairly easily. 
Let's notice that 3b minus 1 is congruent to 2 modulo 3. So that means it has a remainder of 2 when dividing by 3. So really it can only be the members of this list that have a remainder of 2 when dividing by 3. But luckily there's this nice digit sum rule for finding out the remainder when dividing by 3. So you just sum the digits and whatever the remainder of that is when you divide by 3 is the same thing as the remainder of the original number when you divide by 3. So 1 has a remainder of 1 when you divide by 3, so 3b minus 1 is not allowed to be 1. So let's start collecting that here. So that means in the end we won't put that in our list. But 2 has a remainder of 2 when dividing by 3. 4 does not because 4 has a remainder of 1 when dividing by 3. 8 works because it's 2 more than 6. Um, 823 does not work. Let's notice that 8 plus 2 is 10, plus 3 is 13. That's 1 more than 12, so we have a remainder of 1. That doesn't work. Let's see, 1646 does work. So 6 plus 4 is 10, plus 6 is 16, plus 1 is 17. That's 2 more than 15, so that has a remainder of 2. So 1646 6 is totally okay. And then finally, the last number is also totally okay. 6584. But this one in the middle right here is not 2 more than a multiple of 3, so it cannot work. And now from here, we'll just do these one case at a time. So let's look at our first case. So case one, which will be 3b minus one equals two, that tells us that b is equal to one pretty clearly. Okay, but if b equals one is plugged into this equation over here, we get a nice simplification. We have three a squared minus a squared, so that is two a squared. And then we have a 1 and a 1, which we can move over to give us 242. That's the same thing as saying a squared is equal to 121, which is the same thing as saying a is plus minus 11. Okay, but if b is equal to 1 and a is plus minus 11, we can find out our original values of x and y. And that comes from plugging them into this equation right here. So what we'll get is x equals 6 and y equals 5 is one of our solutions, and x equals negative 5 and y equals negative 6 is another solution based off what we get from this plus and minus. Okay, so now let's move on to case 2. Just to reiterate, we did just get a solution over there. We got two solutions. So case 2 will be 3b minus 1 is equal to 8, but that means that b is equal to 3, fairly clearly. Now if we plug that into our red dot equation over here, we end up with 8a squared equals 208. But that means that a squared is equal to 26, but 26 is not a perfect square. So that means there's in fact no solution here over the integers. So that tells us to move on to our third case. So case three, which is the case when 3b minus one equals 1,646. So this leads us to b equals 549, just a standard calculation. And then plugging this all the way through our red dotted equation over here, we'll see that that tells us a squared is less than zero, which shouldn't be super surprising because notice here we got a squared is 121 for b equals one. And then if b got a little bit better, bigger, a squared got smaller. But now b is a lot bigger, which turns a squared smaller and smaller and smaller until it's less than zero. But let's recall we're working over integers here and no integer squares to a negative number. So that means we also get no solution here. And in fact, you can work out the fourth case and see for the same reason as this third case, there's also no solution. So that means in the end, we only have these two solutions over here. X is six, Y is five, and X is negative five and Y is negative six. And that's a good place to stop. 
Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.